Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurtzgesagt's videos. Specifically this one, Smallest to Largest Objects in the Universe Ultimate Size Comparison. That's the great thing about nuclear. Start off with the smallest things and use it to power large cities. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's get right into it. A three-story building is about 10 meters tall, six times bigger than you. In the opposite direction, six times smaller than you, you get things like a cute squirrel, about <laughs> sure. 27 centimeters small. So the building is just as big relative to you as you are to a squirrel. You're in the middle. A it's easy house. to understand. In fact, you are in the middle of everything in the universe. Let's go on a fantastical journey together to the small and the large and see if it's really true. An A320 is 37 meters long. The Rufus Hummingbird is around seven centimeters. Okay, so we're going in one direction and we're going bigger and then we're going smaller in each incremental step. That's an interesting way of doing that. I've looked at other size comparisons that you either start off as you know, like a plank length and go all the way out beyond the universe or vice versa. But this is, this is interesting. Both of these flyers are 23 times bigger or smaller than you, and both fly into continental distances. The tiny it's bird migrates between Alaska and Mexico. If the hummingbird were the same size as the jet, it would circle the Earth 85 times every year. Dinopodera, yeah. the largest ant in the world, is about 55 times smaller than you. Their small colonies have around 100 individuals, but no queens. Instead, they ruthlessly compete for status within the nest, which can reach 1.2 meters deep. If humans that's lived like Dinoponera, we'd be building towers small. of over 25 stories filled with offices and ruthlessly competing for status. And wait, <laughs> the deadliest oh no. and most that's... annoying insect in the world is the mosquito. 235 times smaller than you, while on the other end, the Empire State Building is about that much larger than you. Okay. Kind of unimaginable how something this small creates so much devastation for something that big. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. And uh, again, ruthlessly competing with each other inside the Empire State Building. <laughs> Getting to the borders of human like perception that. now. Like coarse grains of sand about three millimeters, 550 times smaller than you. You can feel their shape and roughness between your fingers, and if you focus, see them individually. We mix them into concrete like that can hold up the tallest forth. towers ever built, like the 828 meter tall Burj Khalifa oh, that's 500 times larger than you. If you were that tall, people would be as small to you as grains of sand in your hand. That's so cute. Hey, be gentle. <laughs> Anything smaller or bigger, and it becomes hard to grasp. A medium-sized city like oh, Lisbon grasping, is about sure. 6,000 times larger than yourself it. and permeated by a network of highways, roads and alleys. On the other end, about 6,000 times smaller than you, are your small arteries oh, permeating arteries. your whole body. <laughs> Actually, you're in the middle between your network... <laughs> that little red thing, I was thinking, it's like, is that a really, really small firecracker or something? But no. <laughs> ...vessels and the network of a city like Lisbon. If you think of a city as a living being, you find more and more parallels. Now the lungs, yeah. A small alley is as small to the city as an arterial 0.1 millimeters wide is to you. Your tiniest capillaries are to you what the pipes bringing water to homes are to Lisbon. Going further, 100,000... I've heard this comparison of a human being to a city and all of its inhabitants are cells. Though it'd be a really big city considering there are trillions of cells inside of a person. It's a... It's a fascinating description. I want to say there was even this one cheesy movie that came out in the early 2000s. I can't quite remember what its name was, but I think it was like a buddy cop comedy inside of a city. I'm smaller than you. We reach a typical skin cell about 30 micrometers in diameter. A neutrophil is half as big, and one of your red blood cells is merely seven micrometers. They are as hmm. small to you as you are to the entire Tokyo metropolitan area, Whoa, the largest yeah. urban area in the world spanning over 160 kilometers. You are so That's incredibly big, big filled with so much complexity, Japan, so but... many different moving parts. Or are you just a cell in the human civilization's superstructure? Are you both? 
Our steps are getting larger and larger now. On that note, we're just a cell within human civilization, but you could even look at a bit further that we're just, it's not like us, our civilization versus nature versus the universe. You could even say we're just part of nature. We were created by a natural processes. We come from, from stardust. <laughs> It just happened to arrange itself in the right particular configuration. And the stardust also gave us the necessary resources we need to build great civilizations. Resources such as uranium, because it comes from things like uh, supernovas and kilonovas, which happen to merge with our planetary nebula and give us this crazy force. I don't know, maybe. Germany is around 875 kilometers from north to south and the fourth biggest agricultural exporter in the world. Rhizobia is a nitrogen-fixing bacteria Never up to three that. micrometers long, and without it, that sort of agricultural production is impossible. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so we have a country and a bacterium. To I love the connections of something really small, something this much smaller and this much bigger to each other. That's that's awesome. Ending on each other, and you are in the middle, both being roughly 550,000 times <laughs> larger or smaller than you. What about the whole Earth? It's about 12,700 wow. kilometers in diameter, about 7.7 .7 billion times larger than you. On the other side of the scale is corny bacterium, as little as 0.3 micrometers across, living on your skin and eyes along with 100 billion other bacteria, more than 10 times more than there are humans on Earth. Again, you're in the center, right in the middle of something so large that our civilization is a mere scratch on its surface and something so <laughs> small and numerous you never notice its presence even as it touches yeah, you. Yeah, that's so Does we're that a planet relative to those things. That's kind of awesome. Or big. From here on out, your brain is breaking a bit. Four times wider than Earth is Neptune, a cold blue gas giant 49,500 kilometers wide. The largest planet though is Jupiter. 140,000 kilometers Largest in diameter, in our solar system. a titanic abyss shrouded in terrible winds. You could drop Earth whole into its depths <laughs> and it would simply vanish. On the opposite scale... I heard that Earth could actually fit, could probably fit three of them within that big red spot of Jupiter just by itself. Crazy. Just one big storm system. We find the deadly West Nile virus, 50 Ooh, nanometers wow. in diameter. Or one step down, the spike proteins on a coronavirus that open Here up cells there. for its RNA oh, payload. They are as small to you as you are to the planet Jupiter. You are in the middle between gigantic planets and the world of viruses. These tiny things. So deadly. Let that sink in. I guess the comparison factor is uh, that both COVID and being exposed to the atmosphere on Jupiter can kill you pretty quick. A tiny virus is taking over and killing lung cells up to 500 times larger than itself with the help of a tiny protein weapon. That's like you trying to kill a giant the size of the Burj Khalifa with a screwdriver. <laughs> but the real awesome. boss of the solar system is the sun. <laughs> Ten times bigger than Jupiter, a billion times... I wonder if there's a story about that with the, with the whole giant, something like that. ...larger than you, controlling all the planets and source of all energy that drives life. A billion times smaller than you, clearly the boss of our body, DNA. is a DNA strand containing the sun all gives the information us life and making DNA your gives life, us life possible. Here we go. You're right in the middle between the most important factors keeping everything alive. Yep. <laughs> From this here on, fun. things just kind of stop making sense. A billion is already too much, but now everything just seems to mean a lot. A lot. The supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy, well, Sagittarius A star, is 14.5 billion times bigger than you. A hydrogen atom is 15.5 billion times smaller than you. Yeah. <laughs> the electron, this proton and electron are too small. Okay, sure. But the thing is, we're not even close to being done, and it's not impossible to get at least a sense of how these scale. Well, okay, let's see, how do these compare? So, hydrogen, most common element in the universe, um, responsible for things like nuclear fusion, so stars generating energy due to isotopes of hydrogen like deuterium and tritium. And then black holes, so things that are going to be around for a while, like supermassive black holes 10 to the, 10 to the 100 plus years of them being around. Stuff that's small, not very complex, that makes up a lot of the universe's energy versus stuff that's big, not very complex, that makes up a lot of the universe's entropy. That's a bit force. The solar system is 22 trillion times larger than you. 
On the other end of the scale is the wavelength of low-energy neutrinos <laughs> oh, released from fusion reactions wow. in our sun. About a hundred trillion of them. Those you almost forget about when calculating energies from, from nuclear fusion. They actually carry away some of its waste products, for lack of a better term, some of that mass energy. They're very high energy. Uh, neutrinos can be from fusion, but again, this is something that is very small. Passing through you every single second, like ghosts a trillion times smaller than you, basically never hitting any of the particles inside you. If you moved through the solar system in a straight line, you probably wouldn't hit anything either. Okay. Although things are beginning to get really weird now. A single pro Now that's that's interesting about the uh and neutrinos also get produced in uh fission reactions and they're responsible for about for about five percent of the energy. But those isn't really brought up as much because it's just, you know, most mostly just straight up energy. It doesn't really do anything as far as causing additional fissions or dosing people that happen to be in the vicinity. They're just kind of there. <laughs> At the heart of the hydrogen atom is almost exactly one quadrillion times smaller than you. If the proton were as big as Whoa. you, the hydrogen atoms would be taller than 12 Mount Everests. <laughs> On the other end, we meet something that just breaks human brains. The incredible vastness of space. We just have no reference for these distances at all. The distance to the closest star to Earth, Alpha Centauri, is not one quadrillion times in the other direction from the tiny proton, but 24 quadrillion. Space is just so large, it's kind of mean. Mm. And it goes on like this. A quintillion times smaller than you is the strange world of the quarks. The proton is not actually like a tiny ball, but kind of just a ripple on the surface of the ocean of quarks. Yeah. Every moment, Ocean of countless quarks. quarks pop into existence, along with their antiparticle enemies, before doing furious battle and annihilating doing each other in an instant. Battle. How many? Impossible to say, because the harder you look for them, the more quarks seem to appear. We're simplifying so much, it's like a lie anyway. However we choose to illustrate this, it's wrong. What it's one of those things that the act of observing it, it's so small and sm so numerous, if you look harder, you just happen to to see more of something. It's and if you and if it knows and if you're looking for quarks, you're just gonna see more quarks. It's kind of like when you when you Google something, you see more of what you're looking for because Google knows what what you've looked for in the past. It is a quark. What does it look like to human minds? Nobody knows. As you sit here confused, let's look up again. The ocean of quarks in a proton inside a single atom of a single cell of your body is as small to you <laughs> as you are compared to a sphere around silly. 174 light years across containing about 16,000 star stars. Sphere. And this is just a tiny speck of dust to our galaxy. Term, I've heard the term star cluster before, but maybe cluster implies they happen to be within a certain range of each other. The Milky Way is close to one sextillion times larger than you. At the opposite end, we have particles a sextillion like times smaller than yourself. Like the wavelength of high energy neutrinos released when cosmic rays hit our atmosphere. We're getting to the end. The observable universe is 93 billion light years in diameter. Close to observable. a billion, billion, billion human lengths. But it's still finite. It's only 465,000 Milky Ways <laughs> side by side. If it's you funny were the size of our galaxy, the observable universe would only be a day's drive across. <laughs> On the other end galaxy? of that scale, we have the tiniest... <laughs> Albeit scaled everything down and you're going to be altering the speed of light to accommodate the relative size too, of course, but still. <laughs> ...ever detected. A proton traveling so close to the speed of light, it got squished OMG into a pancake. Particle? <laughs> as small compared to you, as the whole observable universe is big one. to you. We're at the border of things that we have evidence for. Are you truly in the middle of everything? The theoretical smallest physical distance is the Planck length, a hundred million times smaller than even the pancake proton. But we don't know if it's real, only that our theories of the universe break down here. Mm. Likewise, on the other end, does the bigness of the universe match the smallness of the Planck length? Well, actually, the universe could be considerably larger than that, but yeah. we will never know. Now this is what's interesting, is that the fact that we're at the center and we're kind of seeing things when we get so much smaller versus so much bigger, just based on what we can observe 
based on our relative size position to everything. I'm thinking it could be that because it's just what we can observe. If you get way, way smaller or way, way bigger, then our that's where our models go out the window, like they said. However, if we were a different size for whatever reason, would this horizon of what sizes make sense to us move along with us? Like if we happen to be a million times smaller and everything and everything else, would everything else scale based on that? I wonder. Let's go back and look at the dimensions again. There are so many big things and so many small things wrapped up in them. The universe seems to be exactly the right size, with you in the middle. Kind of reminds me of the whole adage of like us being the center of the universe. Well, it's kind of just your old, depends on your own frame of reference if you appear to be the center. But from, from someone else's, it's they're going to be the center of it. So not really the center of anything, but also we are the center. Food for thought. This was a fascinating way to do this, by the way. I like the... I like the idea of switching back and forth between each between each direction. That's a, that's a really fun way of doing it. Because I know there's a bunch of size comparison videos out there, but this is the first one that I've seen that at least does it this way. So that was pretty cool. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.